in Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by the Australian Sports Sedan Association. With thanks to Riverside Racing, proud sponsors of the Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. And a very, very happy birthday to William Shakespeare. I know he's not watching. I mean, he'd be 400 or something if he was. But, um, but a happy birthday nonetheless to the Bard, who has given us wonderful, wonderful prose and poetry and plays and just a marvellous contributor to, to humankind as we know it. Welcome to another edition of In Pit Lane. Coming up a little bit later on in the program, coming up in about oh, two weeks' time is a great motorsport and motoring adventure. It's coming up right around Victoria. It's called the Aussie Muscle Car Run. Not only will it be some a lot of fun, but it'll also be raising some valuable and much-needed money for the uh, Leukaemia Foundation. We'll be finding out a little bit about that a little bit later on in the program from our special guest, Phil Walters. Also, we've got music later on in the program. Playing us out tonight is Monique Shelf and she'll be t t playing us out, as I said, at the end of the night with her song Eggshell. So that's something to look forward to a little bit later on in the program. But look, I, I can't say it's been a massive week of motorsport. I will just say that, um, just quickly, it, it's sort of the end of an era. I didn't put it in the news, but tomorrow will be the very last edition of Australian Auto Action. It's a paper that's been around from my earliest days of following the sport back in the early 1970s. And tomorrow is the final edition of Australian Auto Action. So um, a bit of history. So go out and get the uh, the final copy of Auto Action and uh, our uh, our commiserations and uh, our, our thoughts with everybody out there who's um, who's lost a job, including me. Now, but anyway, let's go uh, without the without the need for Auto Action. We can give you all of the news with what we call the In Pit Lane Motorsport News. <laughs> Well, V8 supercar driver Scott McLaughlin's on his way to Sweden for a one-off drive in the Scandinavian Touring Car Championships. McLaughlin will substitute for Prince Carl Philip at Polestar Cyan Racing in the opening round of the championship this weekend. Prince Carl Philip will miss the race due to the 70th birthday of his father, King Carl Gustav. Happy birthday, King Carl. And as well as becoming a father himself in the past week. McLaughlin will join series regulars Richard Gorison and his former Gary Rogers Motorsport teammate Robert Dalgren in the Polestar Cyan Racing's third Volvo S60. The race means, however, McLaughlin will miss the big Porsche Rennsport Festival at Sydney Motorsport Park this weekend. There'll be no shortage of big-name drivers at this weekend's event in Sydney, though, with many of the top V8 supercar stars joining the Carrera Cup field for the weekend. Garth Tander, Shane Van Gisbergen, David Reynolds, Nick Perkat, Michael Caruso, Lee Holdsworth and Tim Slade are just a few to join series regulars at the All Porsche event. Famous local racing Porsches will form a guard of honour on the unique Porsche Trasse or Porschstrasse, and they'll be, that'll be a highlight of the off-track activities. They'll be joined on track by demonstrations of two special racing Porsches on loan from the company's famous museum in Stuttgart. A 1997 model 935 coupe, similar to the car that scored one of Porsche's record 17 outright Le Mans victories, and the 1998 LMP 198 that actually started life as a TWR Jaguar before being converted to an open top sports car and then re-engineered as a Porsche that went on to win back-to-back -back Le Mans in 96 and 1997. Remember, if you can't make it to Sydney Motorsport Park, you can watch all the action. It'll be streamed live and available on the In Pit Lane website. Well, speaking of Porsches, there was no shortage of the famous German mark last weekend out at Sandown. It was the running of the Sandown 240, a four-hour regularity relay. The weather was fine and a good time was had by all. The Sandown 240 is a four-hour regularity relay that attracts teams from right across Victoria. Run by the Porsche Car Club, there were, of course, plenty of Porsches on hand, as well as others that 
were not Porsches, like this gorgeous 1964 Alfa Romeo of Marcus Gordon or the Anglia of Stephen Tatt. The event's widely seen as a major warm-up to the annual Phillip Island six-hour event, which attracts over 500 entries from all over Australia. Last week's event was won by the ski racing Weltmeister team of, you guessed it, four Porsches. Well, this weekend's local attraction will be Phillip Island. It's the opening round of the Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships. 216 cars have entered with the largest field of 45 in the improved production class. The meeting will feature the opening round of this year's Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Last week's guest on In Pit Lane, defending champion Ian Cowley, will be back in his newly acquired ex-Jason Richards Tasman Motorsport Commodore. He'll be joined by fellow V8 runners Ian Rice in his Chev-powered Honda Prelude, Stuart Eustace in his Commodore, Terry Hamilton in a 6-litre VS Commodore and Brad Fox in a 6-litre Falconet. FG. They'll face the challenge of a rotary and turbocharged brigade including Liam Hill in the world's fastest Hyundai XL and Brett Dickey's Honda Prelude. Ron Barney Newbound returns to the series to join Graham Gilliland in Mazda RX-7s while Bruce Henley will once again race the ex-Patrick Dempsey IMSA Mazda RX-8. Well, it was pretty quiet last weekend, at least on the local front, but there was no shortage of action overseas, and a familiar face took victory at the opening round of the Blancpain Endurance Series in Italy. And it's that story that kicks off this week's In Pit Lane International Wrap. V8 supercar driver Shane Van Gisbergen has won a thrilling Blancpain Endurance Series round at the famous Monza circuit in Italy. The New Zealander driving the Garage 59 McLaren fought out a thrilling battle with the pole-sitting Mercedes-AMG of Maxi Book. The two were seldom more than a second apart during the final half hour of the race, but Van Gisbergen managed to hold off the German driver to cross the line a mere three-tenths of a second in front after three hours of incredible racing. Third place went to the Bentley team M Sport Continental of Susek, Reap and Soleil. Simon Paginow has made a two wins in a row with victory in the latest round of the IndyCar series at Barber Motorsport Park. The Frenchman started from pole and led all but six laps of the race to finish just over 13 seconds ahead of Graham Rahal. Joseph Newgarden finished third ahead of Australia's Will Power. Scott Dixon's chances were all but ended early after this contact by Sebastian Bourdais. The Kiwi driver recovered to finish 10th, setting a new lap record along the way. Brittany Force raced to her second victory of the season Sunday at the unique NHRA Four Wide Nationals at ZMAX Raceway. Force held off the two-time defending winner of the race, Antron Brown, along with class veterans Doug Kalitta and Clay Milliken to take the win. Tim Wilkerson powered to his second funny car victory of the season, beating Cruz Pedregon and the Don Schumacher racing charges of Ron Caps and Matt Hagen. In pro stock, Jason Lyne won his third race of the season, finishing in front of teammate Bo Butner, Drew Skillman and Chris McGaha in an all Camaro final. New Zealand driver Hayden Padden took his first ever World Rally Championship victory in Argentina, holding off a late race challenge from world champion Sebastian Ogier. Padden drove his Hyundai i20 to an 11.2 second win in the final power stage to beat Ogier by just over 14 seconds overall. Yari Matty Latvala initially led the rally before crashing out to give Padden the victory. The doctor is back. Valentino Rossi led all the way to take a comfortable win in last weekend's Spanish MotoGP. Rossi's teammate Jorge Lorenzo finished second, later revealing that rear tyre problems forced him to run most of the race with only 80% throttle. Marc Marquez was third. Back-to-back backflips -back as Carl Edwards took out his second straight win at Richmond last weekend. A late race caution caused by a spin to Ryan Newman set up a fight to the finish with Kyle Busch taking the lead. But Edwards always seemed to have the faster car and on the final lap he bumped his teammate aside to take the win. The JGR team debrief would have been interesting to say the least. And victory to Audi driver Lucas Degrassi in the first Paris E Prix, the latest round of the Formula E World Championship. Held around the streets of the famous city, Degrassi dominated the race to take the win from local heroes Jean-Éric Verne and Sebastian Buemi, who inherited third position after Sam Bird spun five laps from the end. And coming up this weekend, the opening round of the CAMS Victorian State Circuit Racing Championships at Phillip Island, featuring round one of the Victorian Sports and Anne Championship.
There's improved production plus Formula Ford, Formula V, MGs, sports cars and historic touring cars. Two days of great racing and spectators under 16 are free, so it's a great family day out. And remember, if you have an event or any news tips for us here at In Pit Lane, then contact us direct at the show at inpitlane.com. If you're looking to promote your business or services, contact us at advertise at inpitlane.com and ask for a media kit. Check out the Inpit Lane website for the latest news and live streaming of motorsport from all over the globe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and remember to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Google+. Look, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like a bit of a break now to have a look at some uh, have a look at some commercials. Or, no, not commercials, sorry, sponsorship announcements. We're going to have a look at them now, and when we come back, we'll be joined by our special guest, Phil Walters from the Aussie Muscle Car Run. You're watching In Pit Lane, and we'll be right back. Feel the power when Riverside Racing presents the Victorian Sports Sedan Championships. V8 muscle, high-tech turbos and screaming rotaries in the fight for local supremacy. The Riverside Racing Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Round 1, Phillip Island, April 30th and May 1st. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, every weekend there are thousands of, of hundreds of motorsport enthusiasts around Australia who get involved not just in the sporting side, but also in raising money for local causes as well. And here's an opportunity for, to basically be involved in motorsport and make money for a good cause as well. Coming up in a couple of weeks' time will be something called the Aussie Muscle Car Run. It's happening right around Victoria. And to find out exactly what it is and how you can get involved, Joining us tonight, our special guest is Phil Walters. Phil, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much for having us, Brett. What is the Aussie Muscle Car Run? Well, I guess the best way to describe it is a six-day cruise around Victoria in, in muscle cars. Things uh, built between 1963 and 77 mostly, so both the special type performance cars, but also some other special interest cars. So we, uh, over, six, over six days, we'll visit the, foot, the Holden Proving Ground at Lang Lang, uh, the Winton Motor Raceway, Heathcote Drag Strip, the Ford Proving Ground at the Yu Yangs, and uh, also some uh, more motorsport at, at Portland, and uh, obviously the scenic route in between. So, uh, yeah, pretty big six days, about 2,000 kilometres. So I, I suppose it's, it's like, a you know, as you say, the ultimate cruise. It's going to take a week, but it's also going to raise money for a very good cause. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, but the... Um, the Leukaemia Foundation is uh, trying to establish some accommodation in Melbourne for people that need to come to come Melbourne for uh, leukaemia treatment or for blood cancer treatment. And uh, this is to raise funds for that. So, so far we've uh, got $55,000 in the bank and uh, obviously looking for a bit more. Now, I understand that uh, similar things have been held in uh, interstate and this is, but this is the first Victorian one. Yeah, it is the first Victorian one. It's been running now, uh, this will be the fifth year in South Australia. That'll be run in November. And uh, the uh, Western Australian ran for the first time in uh, last year, and that'll run again in uh, late October this year. Mm -hmm. So, what's the idea? You said the, 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 there's competitive stages to it. I mean, we're talking about fairly expensive cars here, and uh, if, if people just want to come along for the cruise and they don't want to get involved in any of the motorsport side of it, is is there still things for them to do as well? Most welcome to bring uh, bring the car out for a drive. You don't have to compete in the motorsport. It's uh, it's a regularity thing anyway, so it's really not based on who's the fastest. It's about how regular you can be. And uh, we have things like fuel consumption tests. We have an observation, some questions to answer and that kind of thing. But as well as that, there's some serious drag strip and, and, and circuit stuff for those who want to do it. So when you say Aussie muscle cars, we're we talking just about things like Falcons, Monaros, Tirana, SLR 5000s, Valiant Chargers, that sort of thing. Or if someone wants to turn up in, well, you raced a Mustang, you had a Mustang out of Sandown on the weekend. Someone turned up in a 68, 69 Mustang, they're not going to be thrown away, are they? Most welcome to bring a Mustang along, I could, I could tell you, or any, or, or any of those uh, American cars, V8s that you generally consider supercars, but or muscle cars of the 60s and 70s. But also, uh, if someone's got something a bit interesting that they'd like to bring, well, give us a call. You know, we've got slots available for people in, in cars that perhaps aren't those 60s to 70s muscle cars, maybe later model, uh, future classics or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So how did you get involved in this? What was your motivation for getting involved in all of this? Uh, look, we, we saw it as a great opportunity to see, first of all, a bit of the countryside, I suppose, because South Australia, you see quite a bit of the country. We do 3,000 kilometres over there. Uh, a bit of motorsport, a great cruise with some, some friends that you haven't met yet, you know, so new guys. 
and also to uh, you know pl play around with a bit of motorsport. The motorsport really isn't uh, full on competition. It's uh, as I said, it's regularity and and just basically a bit of fun adds a bit of a bit of another dimension. And I suppose with the car industry in Australia sort of you know, winding down, the opportunity to go to places like the Lang Lang Proving Ground, and you, you actually got access to the big speed bowl there, which I've been lucky enough to actually drive on, and that's that's going to be quite a thrill. So uh, if you've got an old Monaro or a Falcon, this is a sort of, you know, taking, as you say, taking them back home. Very, very hard very hard to get a, a deal like this. And, and you're right, the theme of the, of the event is uh, taking the beast back home, take it back to where they were developed, raced and, and built. And uh, certainly we'll be on the speed bowl at uh, Holden and on the constant speed track at Ford. So you get both of those bank tracks to have a look at all in the same week. And uh, I don't know that's been done before. No, certainly not. And if people want to get involved in, the, in that motorsport event, what do they need to do to their cars? Do they need roll cages or anything like that? No, it's uh, just a uh, standard uh, car's fine. Uh, as I said, it's not full-on competition. It's it's L L2S or in uh, in cam speak, so uh, no roll cage needed, but you would need a fire extinguisher and a hard hat and a helmet and uh, full body cover, neck, neck to wrist to ankle. Uh, in non-flammable clothing, you don't need driving suits or any of that kind of thing, and uh, a AASA licence. OK, well, it sounds like it's going to be a fabulous uh, way to, to sort of spend a week. It starts starts off, I believe, at uh, Caribbean Gardens in Scoresbury on the, on, the, Scoresbury on the 16th. Yep, starts at the Caribbean Gardens at about 10.30 on the 16th, if you uh, people want to come along to that. And uh, it finishes at uh, the Bayview uh, on the Park Hotel uh, in um, Albert Park. And we're finishing with a, um, a memorabilia auction and uh, dinner with uh, a guest speaker and, we're, and uh, guests are most welcome to come to that. So uh, uh, there's a fee, of course, because that's how life is. But um, you can get information from that on the, uh, from the Muscle Car uh, website. Yeah, well, I'm sure we've got all the details to contact uh, to contact both the, you and the Leukemia Foundation. But uh, well, good luck with it. It sounds like an enormous lot of fun. I wish I had one. I wish I had the time and the money. Two, I wish I had a muscle car. But uh, look, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, good luck with it. And for now, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks very much, Brett. And we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll uh, have more news and also music with Monique Shelford. You're watching in Pit Lane. We'll be right back. Build the power when Riverside Racing presents the Victorian Sports Sedan Championships, V8 Muscle, high-tech turbos and screaming rotaries in the fight for local supremacy. The Riverside Racing Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. Round 1, Phillip Island, April 30th and May 1st. Welcome back to In Pit Lane. Well, as predicted, VA Supercars of today announced a major sponsorship deal with Virgin Airlines. The announcement was made earlier today at the Virgin headquarters at Brisbane Airport. VA Supercar CEO James Warburton said something absolutely wonderful about Virgin and what a great day it was for the sport in Australia, etc, etc. Virgin Airlines CEO John Borghetti said that Virgin Airlines was proud and privileged to join Australia's most popular motorsport championship, or words to that effect, because we're recording Tuesday night, and so we have got absolutely no idea what they actually did say, but I reckon we're going to be pretty damn close. Nissan have announced the signing of young Porsche standout Matt Campbell as Todd Kelly's co-driver in this year's Endurance Series, including the Bathurst 1000. Campbell was the class of the Porsche GT3 Cup before making the move to the Carrera Cup, where he was instantly competitive. He started out the season with wins on the streets of Adelaide and currently lies third in the championship. Todd Kelly said that Campbell had been most impressive in testing with the Nissan Altima, proving to be both fast and reliable. That's a good signing, that one. Western Australia was the site for the opening round of this year's Australian Rally Championship, the Quit Forest Rally, and it was a case of back to the future as a familiar face in a familiar car took the honours for the opening round. Simon Evans has taken out the opening round of the Kumo Tyre Australian Rally Championship after winning the second heat today at the Quit Forest Rally south of Perth. His superior amount of stage victories saw him get the nod over heat one winner Harry Bates, who finished second outright for the second time in his career. Evans and his co-driver Ben Searcy attacked early, opening up a nearly insurmountable lead after this morning's opening stage. 
and when he wrapped up the bonus point for the most stage wins, he was able to manage the gap back to Bates all the way home. Few were surprised that the son of Neil Bates, a four-time Australian rally champion, would display such raw speed. But Harry's ability to contend for victory in a car that his dad used to win this event eight years ago was very impressive. He ultimately leaves WA with seven stage wins, a heat victory and just one point off the championship lead. Mark Petter's pug was on the verge of an outright podium until a steering arm broke late in the day. This left Justin Dowell and Molly Taylor to duke it out for third. They finished the event tied on points, with Dowell's Hyundai getting the nod via the countback system. It was an incredible drive from Molly Taylor in her Group N spec Subaru, nearly pinching a podium from a far superior prototype car. From here, the championship heads to Canberra for the National Capital Rally in May. And that's all we've got time for this week on In Pit Lane. Coming up on next week's program, we'll have all the news from the Victorian State Championships down at Phillip Island and, of course, much, much more. But also, to take us out tonight, we've got uh, Monique Shelford and Monique is going to be uh, taking us out with her song, Eggshells. And you can see... Uh, Monique at the Yarra Hotel on Johnson Street in Abbotsford on May the 1st or Friday the 13th woo, of May at the Incinerator Gallery. As I said, that's all the time we have for this week. Hope you'll join us next week. Whether you're watching live on Channel 31 or on the Channel 31 app, available for both iOS and Android. If you don't have it, get it. So until we see you next week, this is Monique Shelford and Eggshells. From all of us here, good night.
In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by the Australian Sports Sedan Association. With thanks to Riverside Racing, proud sponsors of the Victorian Sports Sedan Championship. <laughs>